Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike with Fowler Family Farm. And today we are going to take a one last look at the uh, meat chickens before we butcher them this, uh, this Saturday. Today is Thursday, May 20th. And we're going to butcher them Saturday, uh, May 22nd. And we should be having some uh, another YouTube channel coming out and uh, helping us butcher, so that'll be pretty cool. Most of you guys already know who it is, and probably most of my subscribers are subscribed to him, but it's this guy right here. If you can see my shirt. Rustic Woodwork and Family. Brandon, Stephanie, and the three kids are going to be coming out here and uh, helping us butcher the chickens. Um, we also have some pretty sad news at the end of this video so stick around and I'll share that some of you may be able to figure it out before the end of the video anyway uh, I want to give you guys a quick look at the meat chickens week seven actually this is like seven and a half weeks because Saturday will be the eight week point um, it is raining a little bit out here so I'm using my GoPro right now uh, so let me know how this video goes also, or how this how the actual video looks compared to my other videos where I use a, uh, a Canon M50 camera. Um, this is a GoPro 9. Uh, I like it. It's just hard to, you can't really zoom in. You gotta actually just get closer if you wanna zoom in. Um, there are ways to zoom in, but you have to stop the video, zoom in, resume the video, it's kinda weird. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys like this. Uh, the picture of this camera and then at the end of the video I'll go back up to the porch and we'll have a talk and that'll be with my ca uh, Canon M50 let me know which uh, picture looks better which audio is better Okay, so I just moved them. I still have 16, so I haven't lost any since like two weeks ago. They're big, healthy birds. I think it's about time to butcher them. I could probably go another week, but last year when I did my Cornish Cross, some of them were eight pounds, and that's just too big for the way we cook. So I want these to be five to six pounds. That one laying down back there is the one that was originally hurt and it gets around okay now. It's It moves pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and feed them real quick and give them some fresh water. And then I'll do that one more time tonight. And then they'll get one more feeding tomorrow morning, which is Friday morning. And they won't eat <clears throat> for 24 hours after that. We'll butcher them. And it's been raining on and off for probably four days. So that's the main reason they're dirty. Because they'll go through all this grass. I'll probably, I'll probably move them one, one more time today. And then twice tomorrow. That one's trying to suck at me. Let me show you guys also what 
moving them does. So that was, I moved them last night. Didn't do a whole lot. So I moved them this morning, 12 hours later, basically. So that's what they'll do in 12 hours. Uh, that's what they'll do in 24 hours. <clears throat> and then this right here that I'm walking in uh, has already started recovering pretty well. It goes all the way to there. I mean, you can see the, you can kind of see the difference on that. It's greener than the rest of the, than the rest of the yard, even though the rest of the yard is green, pretty green too. But good fertilizer. And the reason I, the reason I start like I'll start here. And I'll pull it all the way down that way, and then I'll turn around and pull it back this way. Is by Saturday, they should be right in here, which puts me closer to the barn, which is where we'll butcher. I don't want to be way down there by the boat, you know, having to haul chickens all the way up to the barn. Okay, let's feed them and water them real quick. Like something I do uh, every time I do water is I scrub this where they're actually drinking out of. I also scrub the inside of this. Doesn't take a lot, just a, a light scrub. And these scrubbers that we have are old ones that we just keep out here by the water. Because we scrub, uh, you know, this. We'll scrub all kinds of stuff with it. Uh, all the water buckets we have for all of the animals. I did give them uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, today is Thursday. I think I gave it to them Tuesday. I think that Tuesday one will be the last time I give it to them. Doesn't matter how often you clean these, when I come back out here tonight and redo this, it's gonna feel slimy, just like it does right now. sure some of y'all are wondering why am I using this waterer it's the electric heater one to for the winter time it's because my good one that's bigger broke and then I never got around to doing the five gallon bucket either that I wanted to do so <clears throat> that's why I'm using this one hey chip really you want to come visit it's just water buddy it's not ice cream it's not ice cream, it's just water. Uh -huh. I'll feed you later. Really? This is not y'all's food? Y'all already got fed. You go lay me a blue egg. I can't remember the name of this chicken, or the breed of this chicken. It's got blue ears, or you know, ear lobes, or whatever they call it. And she lays blue eggs.
trying to do a video. Cut it out. Okay, you can see how these, uh, see this, this one that's been hurt, that's real small. I feed it off to the side. But it will get in here and eat with these guys once I lower the door. Once I lower the door, this feeder drops down a little bit lower and makes it easier for them to eat. But man, they will go crazy over this stuff. And that nice... Hey, I'm trying to do a video. Chill. And the mess I end up making up here ends up going down on the ground too. So I'll eat it all. Dang. You can see how low it is. It's more natural for them to peck towards the ground. And that little one, wherever it went, it'll get in there and eat too. That's seven, seven and a half weeks, guys. Uh, hey. That is seven and a half weeks. Uh, they all look really, really good. Um, that one hurt one, you know, it's kind of smaller than the rest of them, but that's okay. Uh, they're all doing good this time around. Um, and I think it, it's because I did not feed them as much. I slowed their feed down. Okay, buddy. I slowed their feed down drastically. I mean, I, I fed them, you know, last year I fed these guys almost all the time. Like I, I almost made sure they had food all the time. The only time they didn't really have food was right in the morning last year. And I lost over half my chickens just from broken legs and then they couldn't move. Uh, and then I think a lot of them had the heart problem as well because of just getting too big too quick. I also last year raised some uh, Red Rangers and I didn't lose any of them. Now I did them in the fall and it got kind of cold at the end. And uh, they didn't have any, any heat problems. It was kind of cool weather. Uh, I started with, I think I started with, actually I started with 22, but one was dead the first day I got them. And then I butchered 21, so that was a really good. And those chickens, none of them got bigger than five pounds. I think most of them weighed about four pounds. So if you want something that's more hardy and can survive a lot more, the Red Rangers, I think. These Cornish Cross get big fast. And the Red Rangers, I had to, I had to feed out for about 12 or 13 weeks. These guys are almost at eight weeks and they'll be at least five to six pounds. Okay, so that's uh, Cornish Cross meat chickens at basically three days shy of eight weeks. Um, Y'all could probably tell I'm not upbeat today in this video. I'm kind of blah, kind of sad a little bit, really. Um, so Monday morning, today is Thursday, uh, the 20th. So Monday morning on the 17th, I was at work. Tanya was at work. Uh, I get a phone call from Braxton. Dayla was just ran over. Our livestock guardian dog was ran over. And it was my dad who, who ran Dayla over. And she, he did, of course he didn't know it was an accident. Um, Dayla always lays in the same spot just about every morning. I can I usually see her when I go to work. My mom sees her. Tanya sees her when she goes to work. She's usually laying in the same spot, and my dad's like, "Yeah, she was laying in that same spot." I was driving down the driveway. Um, the goat started running up to the fence, so my dad kind of slowed down to look at the goats. Um, and the next thing he knows, he felt a bump. Dela uh, broke several bones. Several. It was. It was bad. Um, Tanya, or I'm sorry, Braxton and my dad, call him Papa, rushed Ayla to the vet. Uh, the vet did some x-rays uh, and basically recommended that we put her down. Um, that was a recommendation. 
And if you guys raise these kind of dogs, they have a purpose um, to themselves. They have a purpose, not just to you, but that dog is a goat. She wants to be with the goats. She stays with the goats. She was literally 15 feet away from the goats where she was laying down. That's where she always lays. <clears throat> um, so it's very unfortunate. Um, we did put her down. Um, it was a very hard decision. Uh, but we thought it was the best decision for Dela. And Tanya and Braxton aren't going to be on this video just simply because it probably affected them the most, obviously. Um, so that's enough on that one. I don't want to get too in depth on that. It's just a sad, it's just sad and it just keeps us sad. Uh, so I don't want to go too far on that. I'm sure some of you guys will understand. And then I'm sure there's going to be some of y'all that think we still shouldn't have put her down. But we do believe it was the best thing for her. Um, she would have never been the same. She would have never, she wouldn't have been able to walk. The vet said she wouldn't be able to walk. Another, <laughs> it's like it comes in threes. We've only had two, but our last video, um, we had a lot of video of our cat Yuffie in that video. And Yuffie is a, our garage cat. Um, stays in our garage, does really well with mice. We find mice by our house all the time that Yufu had went and caught, even bird. She even caught a bird. Uh, we don't know where Yufu's at now. Um, Yufu typically doesn't stay outside. We leave a window, a garage window open that she comes in and out of. Um, but now we can't find her or him. I say her. <laughs> it's a it's a boy. Um, Braxton saw her Monday. I mean, our best hope is that he's out being a bachelor trying to find cats, uh, but I don't know. We can't, we can't find him anywhere. And we do have owls, so that would be my, that would be my biggest concern is owls. Um, she's always on our porch, always. Or, golly, I keep saying she. He is always on our porch. Um, so he's not anywhere to be found. So that's another situation that's, gonna keep Tanya and Braxton sad as well that was Braxton's cat um, still have hope on that I mean there's no evidence that anything has happened but um, I do I do know that cats will leave at times and come back three or four or five days later so we can hope for that so sorry this was a downer video I know I'm a little little down myself um, well, video wasn't. I'm sure it's not going to be as upbeat as some of my previous videos, um, but we'll get back in the swing of things. We are already looking for a new livestock guardian dog. We found several right here in our area. Well, I say right here in our area, within an hour, hour and a half away. Um, there are several to choose from. Um, Tanya wants one that looks just like Dela, of course, and, and there is one, but I think we may go with a, a male this time around. We'll see. <laughs> Um, and it's either going to be a Great Pyrenees like Dela was or an Anatolian so that's what we're looking for we've talked to two or three different people already about what they have um, there's two that are already available now that we can go pick up and then there's one that will be available June 1st so it's not far off I don't want to go too long without goats I'm, I'm sorry I don't want to go too long without a livestock guardian dog so I want to get something out here pretty quick. Um, Tanya, with Dela, Tanya spent weeks walking the property line with Dela every day, two or three times a day. Just walking the property, uh, just staying inside of our border. Um, and Dela never left. I mean, she stayed in our property and never left our property. Uh, so we're gonna have to do that with the new pup. Um, Tanya loves doing that kind of stuff. She loves training them like that. And she loves bonding with them, even though it's just a livestock guardian dog and it should bond with the goats first. Tanya bonds with them. <laughs> so, uh, so sorry about the bad news. Sorry about the sad story. Uh, I know you guys don't necessarily want to watch videos that are sad. You want to watch upbeat, encouraging videos. So, uh, 
wish us luck on the next dog and we've had two bad things this week hopefully we don't have a third all right guys we'll see y'all on the next video be blessed oh look at dayla you're dirty girl you love the rain though don't you all right lay down i'll pet you good girl yeah you're dirty oh you're wet hey dayla ah! that pretty girl you want me pet you okay good girl yeah good girl day Dayla, come to say hi. Hi, Dayla. This is how she wants to be petted. She'll never jump up on you. She just sniffs you and then lets you know that she's there and then lays down. Not you, honey. Yeah, she's a good girl. First thing we'll come to is Dayla here. She likes to sit right there by the barn. She doesn't move far from the barn. Hi, Dayla. See how she lays down for me so that I can pet her? She's sweet. Good girl. Yeah. She usually sleeps during the day and then she's up all night um, prowling and um, protecting the farm. Um, usually she's right there by my back door barking. So sometimes I have to get onto her, but um, I would prefer her bark if there's um, animals that aren't supposed to be over here, so she's a good girl.